Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So today's video is going to feature one of the best Sorcerer hybrid builds in ESO currently and we're starting right now. And before we dive on into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. The best way to support the channel is with a simple like and sub, but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute Chad, we do have YouTube memberships enabled as well as Patreon. Some of the benefits include emojis, shoutouts in each and every single one of my videos, links to private Discord channels, and one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, a little bit stuck, everything is down in the description below. Now let's get into the video. Okay guys, and we're back. Thank you so much for watching my shameless plug at the beginning. Now that I have your undivided attention, guys, I accidentally went live upon recording this video for at half an hour. So if you want to see a bunch of behind the scenes bloopers about me actually recording this, my girlfriend walking in and handing food, me slurping up my noodles here. Well, um, it is a members only thing now so i'm trying to make the best of it so if you want to actually see this completely unedited and raw well just join the youtube membership man we got all kinds of stuff we, we like like the intro said we, we got emojis with access to private discord channels and we really help support me and support the channel so upon my secondary shameless plug let's actually get into the video so i do have two different builds for you guys today now the first build is going to be my favorite which is the most consistent for me now the second build is going to involve a set that came out this patch and is a little bit different variability because 50 percent of you all do not like this set that i'm using but if you are a true and tried of 1bxer you will agree that this set is op so let's get into the video guys we got to eat our smoke bear haunts, which is very expensive, which is going to be quintessential for running this build. I'll go over all terms of how to do this later, but for the time being, here is our character sheet completely unbuffed. Now, if you want to buff it up, eh, you know, semi buffed up, not necessarily all the way. So resistance is on the back bar around 28k, 25k. Our recoveries actually do go up to 2600 magic recovery as well as 1800 salmon recovery, which you're going to need on this build. So we have all of our points into Max and Magicka. Our health gets up to 29k with our proper buffs active. So it's a nice 29k health threshold. If you're below that, you might consider putting a little bit more points into health, to be honest. When it comes to the Mundus, we're running the Astro Mundus. And now the race, guys. I really don't know what the best race is. If I had to pick, my personal preference is going to be Dumber the Dark Elf for this build. Currently, as I'm making this build video, I am a high elf. It seems to work out pretty good, but I do think dark elf is definitely the way to go. Now, let's hop into the set. The first set we're running is going to be Draugrk, and it is going to take me a little while to explain the set because our build actually revolves around this set. So, Draugrk, One Piece, Max Magica, Penetration, Recovery, Five, <laughs> Penetration, <laughs> Five Piece. Dealing direct damage to an enemy places a curse on your target, allowing every single attack that you do, every single damage that you do, does not matter what it is. A baby dick poison dot, a lightning form proc, a crushing shock, three pronged proc, everything is going to deal additional damage. And when you have nine or ten effects hitting someone every single second, you can see that this is hellacious damage. For example, I mean, if you have ten effects, this is six thousand damage extra every single second. So just keep that in mind. The trait we're running on the staff actually is charge. The reason we're running charge is to get the burning staff effect near every time with crushing shock, as well as minor vulnerability, as well as uh, the concussed staff effect, which makes them take more damage. And then the brittle, minor brittle, excuse me, makes them do less damage to you. So uh, this is very, very good if you're running crushing shock. Also running a poison damage enchantment. Again, this is to have as many damage over time effects you can possibly have on your opponent while Draugrkin is active. Next set we're running back bar is Iron Blood. If you want to run Rallying Cry here instead, you definitely can, but you do need to run Vampirism if you are going to run Rallying Cry. All right, don't don't try to just slot Rallying Cry and think you're okay because people of Malakath are gonna light your ass up like a Christmas tree. Okay, so we want to run Power on the back bar ideally because you do not have access to a burst heal, so you need as much healing potential as possible. So please go with Power on your back bar and then you'll want to run a weapon damage enchantment. Alternatively, you can run double dot poisons again to help the bolster the effects of Draugrkin. Uh, that's entirely up to you. I just prefer to have the extra weapon damage to help me out with my heals. Next monster set. Um, if you do not want to run Smoke Bear Haunch, um, run Engine Guardian here, okay? And run Bewitch Sugar Skulls instead. 
that's how you're going to compensate for your sustained loss not running bear haunch now if you are running bear haunch you can slot whatever monster set you want to run here i just had whatever i had well fitted at the time to be honest with you so i'm running magnet incarnate magnet incarnate really good because it gives you two resource um recovery pulls and also gives you slow damage and resistances so all around it's a really really good set you know you can pretty much toss this on any build and it'd be really good um what armor weights are 511 5 light 1 medium 1 heavy ideally you want all your traits every single one of them to be well fitted um i do not have the stones at the point of making this video so they're in pen Next, we have One Piece Training. You're using this for the One Piece health bonus. The best way to run any of these sets in this patch is a front bar set, a back bar set that allows you to run a monster set, a mythic item, and One Piece Training to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to your armor slot allocation. Jewelry, you want these to be iron blood because you want as much light armor as you possibly can to help with your sustain. So we have iron blood jewelry. I transmuted these to infuse. Everything's weapon damage. And then last but not least is our mythic item, which is Marking Ring of Majesty. You can run Marking Ring of Majesty. You can run Malakanth if you don't want to rely, rely too heavily on your crits and just have more sustained pressure overall. Or you can run Death Dealer's Fate. That's entirely up to you. I personally prefer Marking Ring of Majesty because, again, it does a little bit of everything. Tanks you up a little bit and allows you to do a little bit more raw damage. Okay, so we made it to the skills portion of the video. Now, I'm actually going to take um, quite a bit of time to explain these skills and how they synergize with Draugrkin in the rest of our kit because I feel that it definitely needs to be said. Now, we're running Crushing. Now, now we're running Crystal Fragments on the front bar. This is pretty much a given. Now, we're running Bound Armaments. What this does is it puts a debuff on you. This is kind of similar to the, the, the Nightblades buff, right? So you're going to put a buff on yourself and every single time you line attack, doesn't matter if you're on your front bar or back bar, you're going to build up these charges of these daggers. And then during your burst, you want to just activate it and you're going to hit your opponent with four daggers in 1.2 seconds, inflicting a massive amount of damage. Now, each single one of these dagger ticks does actually get buffed by Draugrkin. So the more instances of damage you can have like per second, the better Draugrkin is going to work. So this has four instances of damage per 1.2 seconds. So this is quintessential on this build. Next, we have Camouflage Hunter. You will not be casting this regularly only to pull Nightblades out of stealth, but what you're slotting it for is the crit bonus that it gives you in addition to Minor Berserk. So when you are flanking an enemy, you get a buff on you for five seconds, allowing you to do 5% more damage. What does flanking mean so flanking is let's take this ogrim for example where he's looking he's looking he's, he's looking right here so in a 90 degree cone from his field of view if you are inside this little triangle right here this is not considered flanking but imagine this is the line if you're outside of this 90 degree line this is considered flanking okay so you will actually get this it's, it's either 90 degrees or 120 degrees doesn't matter idea is that if you are out of his field of view out of his peripherals it's still going to count as flanking even though right here technically i'm not to his side i'm a little bit forward you're still going to get the buff when you attack so uh now you know go over it to the skills crushing shock is probably the best spammable you have because again every single time you weave this you get three instances of damage whenever Draugrkin is up it's going to buff every single one of those instances of damage now you could also run the Sigigord skill line spammable if you wanted to um, this does apply major breach to your opponent allowing them to take 10 percent additional damage plus the stamina cost isn't that bad but if you want to go that route but personally i prefer crushing shock now next is streak streak it literally does everything it's your gap closer it's your stun it's your get the fuck out button it's essential on any sort build in my opinion next when we can get over to our ultimates you can run two ultimates here i prefer the charge astro frank or you can run power overload so power overload is actually buffed by your bound armaments because it buffs your light attack damage by 10 percent the great thing about power overload is that you can cause this burst anytime so dragon can has a reasonably high uptime right so you can go all in on a meteor but what happens when you don't kill him with the meteor you kind of force to wait around until your next ultimate if you're against a pretty good opponent you know yada yada whatever but if you're running overload you can kind of pull this burst out of thin air so it just takes one or two well-placed lie attacks to burst pretty much anyone from 100 to full while jogger can is active back bar you are going to roll dodge quite a lot on this build there is not a burst still okay there's not a burst still so when you get down into execute range you are in trouble fellas you can pop a tri potion which is your first 
line of defense to get you out of execute range. Always have these hots active, always have rapid regeneration and vigor active pretty much all the time. Even if you feel like you're not gonna take any damage, fucking activate it anyway. You have enough sustain. The only line of defense that we have, again, besides Tripod, that pulls out of the execute range when you're getting like whirling wind spam, you know, whatever, is your uh, lights champion or lights giver on the back bar. So this will be out, kind of let you reset the fight. I personally try to avoid using this whatsoever, but sometimes you just get bursted out of nowhere and you have to get out of execute range. So I have Haunting Curse on the back bar. The reason I have Bound Arminus and Haunting Curse on separate bars is because of one very important passive the Sorcerer has, which is called Daedric Protection. So it increases your health and stamina recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric Summoning ability slotted. So Vicious Curse counts and Bound Arminus counts. Please do not put this on the same bar because every time you swap bars, you will lose that 20% recovery on whatever bar does not have a skill slotted. So that's why I have them as such. Next is probably the two best synergizing skills that you have on the kits, which is going to be Critical Surge and Boundless Storm. You're critting all the time. Again, that's why we have Camouflage 107 Execute because you get 10% more crit. So Critical Surge, every single time you get a crit, you're going to heal for around 1600 damage. And yes, this can crit to, for around 2500 to 2700 in Serial. So you pair that with Boundless Storm, ideally or alternatively you can run the other stamina morph that gives you a much bigger aoe radius in hopes of getting more crits but i found that balance storm kind of does it anyway because when i'm one vx in serial everyone likes to dogpile on horcrux so even if you're on the defensive why you have balance storm active every single time it ticks and it crits you're going to get a self heal which is really nice next is life giver again we've already went over this yo what's going giga rage we'll <laughs> do the video brother we'll we'll get that duel eventually so that's everything when it comes to the skills for the build guys so we're gonna hop over into the champion point section and i am pretty set in my ways on this one there's not much variability here so you want to go with focus mending give you 10 percent additional healing because again you don't have a burst heal you have to be proactive not reactive when it comes to your healing so having more heals the better Pretty much every single skill that you have is either single target base or direct damage base. So you want Master in Arms and Deadly Aim. And then last but not least, I have Ironclad slotted. Instead of Ironclad, you could potentially slot a Duelist Rebuff instead. And that will give you more uh, dot protection. But pretty much every single source of damage in the ESO is direct damage. So you get the most bang your bunk running Ironclad. Red Tree. You do not need anything in Forward Fire to balance Vitality. Uh, put all your points into Survival Instincts. So Survival Instincts. Uh, reduces the cost of pretty much everything which is block dog roll break free um it's amazing you're always gonna have a status effect on you if you're solo and then the last three passes that i always run is pain's refuge sustained by suffering and relentlessness giving you major protection for three seconds after getting cc'd and when it comes to the green tree please just skill your gift of rider your speed passives and if you are using expensive potions sometimes tripods can be very expensive you know the columbine and mountain flower and all that fun stuff um, run liquid efficiency because you have a 10% chance to actually get that potion back, which is nice. So guys, that pretty much does it for the build. Uh, TLDR, if you don't want to run Iron Blood, run Rallying Cry on your back bar. If you're going to run Rallying Cry, please, for the love of God, go Vampire. You're going to get squished without it. So uh, this has been the build video, guys. Again, if you want to see the bloopers of me literally for a half an hour, accidentally streaming instead of recording i do have it posted on the channel it's for members only maybe you can kind of hit up the youtube members or if you just want to see it yourself it's only like 299 you know like a one-time thing you know it's really not a big deal but if you want to see that it's pretty funny you can see me in my uh <laughs> my native state but that's it for the build video guys i'm just rambling hopefully you enjoyed it and again before i go a huge shout out to my patrons my community members and my sugar daddy james c but that's it, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.